we distinguish five phases as follows. Phase 1, the first appearance of faint, repetitive, clear tapping sounds that gradually increase in intensity for at least two consecutive beats is the systolic blood pressure. Phase 2. A brief period may follow during which the sound softens and acquires a swishing quality. In some patients, sounds may disappear for a short time. This is called the ascultatory gap. Phase 3. The return of sharper sounds, which become crisper to regain or even in exceed the intensity of Phase 1 sounds. Phase 4. The distinct, abrupt muffling of sounds, which become soft and blowing in quality. Phase 5. The point at which all sounds finally disappear completely is the diastolic blood pressure. When using an electronic blood pressure unit, the basic procedures for ensuring the accuracy of the measurement taken remain exactly the same. Seat the patient quietly and comfortably for at least five minutes prior to the reading being taken. Then use the left upper arm and select the correct size cuff. Some of the units available on the market are manual, meaning that a button is pressed each time a blood pressure reading is required. Other models automatically take blood pressure readings at preset, timed intervals set by the user. Most units are available with pre-configured applications which are chosen by the user prior to purchase. Apart from taking blood pressure readings, pulse readings, mean arterial pressure, oxygen saturation in the red blood cells and thermometry options can be included. The tubing, spring assembly and chest piece should be checked regularly to ensure that the tubing is not broken or perished. The plastic ear pieces must be clean and the spring assembly not broken. The diaphragm must not be damaged and the switchover mechanism from listening with the bell side and the diaphragm side must be functional. The bell chest piece must also have a non-chill sleeve over the edge to ensure patient comfort. The stethoscope must be of the best quality available with a well-fitting spring assembly and clean, comfortable ear tips. Ear tips must also be cleaned regularly. They may be washed in warm water, dried and then reattached. Alternatively, they can be wiped after each use with a 70% isopropyl alcohol solution. The mercury column must be visually checked prior to use to ensure that the level of mercury is at the zero point on the scale. The column must not be dirty. Black sediment on the inside of the column or on top of the mercury would indicate that the mercury is oxidizing, meaning that it has had contact with air and that the rubber washes need to be replaced. There must be no loose mercury inside the case or anywhere. Any change in the mercury level would render the unit inaccurate, in which case the unit should be taken to a qualified technician for repair and recalibration. When supplied as new, a mercury sphygma manometer will have a seal between the mercury reservoir and the column. This prevents mercury being spilt in transit. This seal must be removed prior to use. Use the instruction booklet supplied with the specific unit to release the mercury into the column. If in doubt, send the unit to a qualified technician. The dial face and outer casing should be checked prior to use. Should there be any visual signs of damage, such as cracks or a loose needle, then the unit should be sent to a qualified technician for repair and calibration. Cuffs 
should be checked for leaks. Also check that the Velcro securing section is still functional and that it secures under pressure without pulling apart. The Velcro section must be clean. Remove any bits of cotton wool if necessary. All tubing must be checked for cuts, holes and signs of perishing. All connections must be airtight and secure. The airflow valve must be checked for smooth, easy opening to release the air and ensure that it closes fully. In addition to these visual checks, all blood pressure devices should be sent to a qualified technician for checking and calibration at least once a year. The mercury column or dial needle does not stay in place. When the pressure drops on initial inflation and closing of the airflow control valve, check the cuff, tubing and all connections for leaks. Cannot hear ascultatory sounds. Check that the stethoscope switchover mechanism is on the correct side by tapping gently on the diaphragm with your finger. If necessary, switch over. Check that the stethoscope diaphragm is not damaged. Attempt to keep units free of dust and where possible keep the units in the cases. If this is not possible, cover the instrument with a linen cloth when not in use. Wipe the outer cover of the cuff with a damp cloth in the event of it becoming soiled with blood or medication. Do not immerse the cuff in water unless the tubing has been sealed off with a suitable spigot or clamp prior to washing. It is preferable not to use the blood pressure cuff as a tourniquet while taking blood samples unless provision is made to prevent blood spatter from soiling the cuff. All blood pressure devices are sensitive and every attempt should be made to avoid bumping or dropping the unit. Ensure that all cuffs, bulbs and tubing are manufactured from latex-free materials so there is no danger of latex allergy reactions from either the patient or the clinician. Mercury is a toxic and hazardous substance. Every care should be taken to avoid touching the mercury with bare hands in the event of breakage of the mercury column or any other mercury leakage. Should this occur, then first put on gloves. Pour any mercury from the casing into a clean glass or plastic bottle. Push any other loose, visible mercury together onto a piece of paper and empty this into the bottle. The unit and the collected mercury must then be sent to a qualified technician. If the fault cannot be rectified after these checks, the unit should be referred to a suitably qualified person for further inspection. Remember, all blood pressure devices, whether there is visible damage or not, should be checked and calibrated at least once a year by suitably qualified personnel.